Uh, I'm going to call them up one by one, and then we'll get started. First of all, uh, Kamala Lopez, please join us. Paul Rodriguez. We have a guest who's not on the program, but we're really thrilled that he's here with us. He was an executive at Universal Pictures um, and uh, was instrumental in this film being made. Sean Daniel, please come up and join us. And the writer and director of Born in East LA, Cheech Marin. All right. Let's see. There's a next one. That's yours. Oh, I grabbed this also. Here you go. Bless you. Thank you, Steve. All right. Um, when you <laughs> when you made this film, uh, I think you had directed one other thing before, a mockumentary, right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, did I? It's in IMDb. Okay, I did. <laughs> and now I can't remember the name. But if somebody will look it up. It was a mockumentary. A mockumentary, a Cheech and Chong thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was from uh, Get Out of My Room. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so then you directed this film. Yeah. What, what was your impetus for directing? Well, we, I had always been directing. Tommy and I directed together. You know, but we wrote the films together. He was credited as the director because uh, you know you didn't want to have a one focal point. Uh, but but when we made this film, I had real full confidence that I could go out and do it because that's what I had been doing. All so there were so all the Cheech and Chong movies. There weren't any outside directors. Uh, one time we used our editor. Uh, uh, as a, as a director, it's only so the studio would yell at him instead of us. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's really what it was. And so you had no reservations about taking the song? Oh no, I mean you know because I, I I didn't know enough, you know because it, it, this is the hardest thing to do to write, direct, and star in the movie. Man, he's like you know he's like you're never off. We, when you're a director, you're never off. They you know, ask you a zillion questions, but then you got to you know. Uh, 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 act in it too, boy. That was that was hard, <laughs> but it was fun. Uh, let's uh, talk about the casting a little bit. So, how did you go about uh, casting this film? Ooh. And, and which led to Kamala and Paul being in it. Yeah, I was, uh, Paul. I knew I was always going to be in the film. I wrote the part basically for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know at the time. Uh, no, I do. I, I remember I was working at the Playboy Club here in Century yeah. City. You and Tommy went to see me. I was in between this, uh, uh, I was doing about two, three minutes between these uh, strip, uh, strippers. Yeah. Very hardworking ladies. And I remember after the show, I was so excited to meet you and, and Tommy, right? I was so excited. And uh, I remember I was talking to you and I was saying, you know, I want to be a stand-up and all that. And you said, you know, hang on there because there's a part of a pendejo that uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be perfect for. I said, are you sure? He says, I'm oh, almost yeah. sure. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah. and you, had, you had already done AKA Pablo at that point, right? Uh, I had had my brief moment with yeah. AKA Pablo. I'd done DC Cab first. DC Cab, and, yeah. Uh, and that was, uh, that was a, but you know, none of these movies, I, I've been lucky and fortunate enough to be in some 40 something now, but nobody remembers me. The only thing that people stop me on the street always goes, hey, Jesus is in Tijuana. That's been, <laughs> that's been it. I have been in the hospitals. I've been in accidents. I've been <laughs> at my father's funeral. You know, it's, it's always, hey, you're the guy from Jesus is in Tijuana. There you go, man. That's it. It's Indelible. a tattoo. And Kamala, what were you doing at the time when you got cast in this film? I had just arrived in Los Angeles. I, I it was pretty much, I had done one small independent film uh, prior to that, but this was my first big film um, after college. 
And did you audition? How did you? I auditioned many, many times yeah. in rooms filled with tons for Harvey Weinstein. Tons of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> you think it's too early? It's a little <laughs> too soon. Too, too soon. I'll be over there. <laughs> You're, you're lovely. The years have done nothing to you. You're still as yeah, lovely as that. Still as beautiful, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were t I was trying to figure when she came into our distance, I was trying to figure where you from. And it was Venezuelan Indian. Yes. And I did, wow, really? Like from like uh, Apache, Shoshone? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> New Delhi, you know? <laughs> like, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting combo, man. So had the Cheech and Chong films been done for Universal? I think one of them has. They well did. Up in yeah. Smoke was Paramount. The Param uh, uh, right. next movie was Universal. The next movie was Universal. That's where we met. So uh, did you know each other? How did the film get to Universal? Well, as yeah. Cheech was saying, Cheech and Chong's next movie yeah. Yeah. Uh, was <laughs> their second movie, the next movie, next movie. And it was made at Universal. Yeah. And it was a hit. It was profitable. Uh, and then Cheech had this script. He had this idea for a movie on his own. So he was born in East LA, and he was gonna sing this Springsteen song, yeah. and <laughs> um, he was gonna be, and so I remember that my bosses were like, okay, great, so it'll be like a LA movie. I said, well, he's born in East LA, <laughs> but he actually spends the entire movie in Tijuana. And they're like, well, that's not like Up in Smoke or no. next movie. <laughs> and Tommy isn't in it, I, I know, yeah. but there it's about something. And I, I always thought that what the movie was about was going to attract an audience and to sell tickets. Yeah. And so was it a, did it end up being a hard sell? Was the it was an excruciatingly hard sell. Yeah. Yes. It's you still that way now. Yeah, <laughs> by the way, try pitching this movie today. Yeah. <laughs> Mexicans come over the border by the thousands. <laughs> 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 um, well what, it, what it was was that I had I recorded this song, Born in East L.A. It was just I did it by myself. And, and, uh, and so... Uh, Irving Namesoff, who was the head of Universal Records at the time, That's produced right. it because I was uh, recording for him, and he heard this song, and I did a video at the same time of the song, song, and and he says, "I'm going to take this to Frank Price, who was head of, of Universal at the time. We had worked with Frank Price at, at, at Columbia before, and he got shown the video and the song, and he says, "I think there's a movie here." I said, "I think you're right, <laughs> you know." <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, "But but just for you, I don't. I don't it's not a Cheech and Chong movie. It has nothing to do with drugs." And, and but if you want to do it, I'm ready to do it. Sort of ready to do it, you know, on Universal. And so I said, uh, okay. So in the middle of him about ready to give the the green light for this movie, um, he gets fired from <laughs> Universal. Exactly. Uh, so he gets fired, yeah. and that leaves me and Cheech yeah. with this script. And new management comes in. Yeah. And the good news was. They needed movies that might have a prayer of attracting an audience. <laughs> and I said, well, actually, believe it or not, this is one of them. And we finally got three and a half million dollars. I think it was three and a half million, yeah. Uh, put up for the film. And the truth is the marketing department didn't believe in it. The person who believed in it was, was this oh man. God. It's yes. like, you know, it was... It was when when you put up a movie and the guy you've been working with leaves, you're an orphan at, at any studio. I mean, that happens because they, the next guy comes in and doesn't want anything to do with the last guy's choices. And, you know, you, goodbye. And this was already in the stream. It was getting ready to uh, uh, be released. And it did get released. And it was a big hit right away. And, and uh, uh, Tom Pollock, who became the next head of Universal, comes in on Monday morning after it opened and looked at his board and said, hey, buenos dias. <laughs> I was in the room. That was in the is room, exactly right? what he said. <laughs> That's exactly what he should have said. Yeah. 
So you recorded the song and made this video. Did you have a movie in mind? Uh, no, yeah. no, yeah. not really. I was, you know, I was a record uh, person, and we did concerts. Uh, we, we were doing, we were doing movies. Yeah, no, I didn't have it. I was, you know, concentrating on doing this video. Now would that was a big hit. And Born East LA, the song was a big hit. It was number one in, on radio. And, and so they be, everybody beat me to the punch. Oh, we would think there's a move. I think you're right. You're a genius. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was shot, obviously, in Los Angeles, but also shot where else? Mostly in TJ. Yeah. Wow. Mostly in TJ, yeah. It was it. We what, was, what was that like getting done 30 years ago? It was pretty cool, you yeah. know. I thought it was very cool. We were there for like six weeks. Did, the, stu did uh, the studio know they were, <laughs> they were shooting no. back in they, back I, I told as few people as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you see, back then, 30 years ago, uh, Tijuana and all of Mexico was basically an innocent place. There was the cartels. That's drugs, exactly right. Hadn't, hadn't come. You could still uh, walk around relatively, uh, you know. Yeah. You bribe a cop, uh, 20 pesos that was going right. And, uh, uh, <laughs> he's from TJ, so he knows. <laughs> Not really. I'm from Sinaloa, actually. Oh, you're from right. Sinaloa. Culiacan, <laughs> ahu. But uh, ironically, you shot all your scenes in L.A. In LA. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to set foot in. It's a story of my life. I did Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles, but I shot that in Australia. So it's <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but you shot a lot of scenes, all your scenes, except for in the Tijuana, finale. Yeah. Tijuana. And yeah. and I found uh, it was a highly educated population in Tijuana. There was a very strong middle class there of people that were not transient at all. Yeah. And we got to know them quite yeah. well, and it was it was a great shoot, actually. Yeah, we had a really good... The only process you go through when shooting a film in Mexico, and eventually they, everybody, they say yes to everything until they say no, because yeah. uh, you're great to start, now, and you get introduced to, this, to, introduced to this concept called la mordida. Grease. <laughs> The bite, you know, and they want a bite <laughs> before you let you go. So, oh, okay, here's your bite. You know. um, I want to go back to the song that you started. You said you started by recording the song. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you have to go through to get Bruce Springsteen's sign off and his people? Well, he has two of my kids now, man. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> they're all right, you know. They're, pro they're, they're, they're probably just fine. Yeah, they're yeah. fine. You know, they write me every once in a while. <laughs> Uncle Uncle Cheese, he's on somewhere. No, <laughs> it, it, it was funny because I knew when I wrote this song that that uh, that uh, uh, I, I was sitting in my kitchen and, and, and I had to write one more song for this album. I was doing this album that had videos in it, and and I was I was stuck and I was sitting in my uh, my my kitchen drinking coffee and reading the paper, and I was reading this story. This is actually a true story that happened to this kid. And he was about thirteen. I said, he couldn't speak English. He was born in the in, in U.S., and I think they, he was a little uh, uh, mentally uh, slow, and, and uh, uh, he couldn't speak English. He couldn't tell them, and he got caught in a raid, couldn't tell them where he was, was and who, and they deported him. And, and he was wandering around TJ for like a month. You know, parents didn't know where he was, and blah, blah, you know, so, and so I was, I was looking, and at the same time, the, the Bruce Springsteen song came on the on the radio, born in the U.S. I said, born in East L.A., and I started cracking up, and I said, that, that's it, that's it, you know, I was, and I, so I didn't know what the song Born in U.S.A. was about, and not, not, a, not a clue, I just know every once in a while I was saying, born in East L.A., <laughs> and so I had to go to the record store and get the record, come up, oh. It's about Vietnam vets coming back home, and so, so I said, "Well, he'll 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 relate to this." So I wrote him a letter. Mm. I wrote, "Dear dear Bruce, I'm a big fan, and <laughs> and you know, and I, I I included all the lyrics, and, and I sent it to him, and uh, he said, "Okay," and that was, wow, he did, <laughs> like wow, Bruce. And then when I did the the video, I had to get another permission, and so he was he was getting married. And, and coming off tour and, and going on tour again. And so finally when I caught up to him, I had to, because I, I had a whole crew standing by, they were ready to go, and if I didn't get the, the, the okay in that, that day, it was, they were gonna pull the plug. And I, and I called him, and I located him backstage in Dublin, Ireland. And you could hear the band in the background. <laughs> they were singing, born in the US. <laughs> and, and I talked to his manager, and then he okayed it over the phone, and I could go on. You know? I was like, phew. No, they, that's right, because the studio was looking for a reason 
just to <laughs> just be done with this. Yeah. And so it was, okay, if he doesn't have the song, and then he came to the song. And because he got born in the USA, Neil Diamond then gave you Neil the rights come to, America. to come to America. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you what that was. If that was easy. That was easy? Yeah, I, call him, I think Lou might have called him Adler. Or Adler. Hey, Neil, this is Lou. We need a song. Okay, thank you. And <laughs> 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 was like, truly, that was it, man. Yeah. So how long did the shoot, how long was the shoot? I think it was six weeks, seven weeks. Yeah, six yeah. weeks. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was like, but it was like, we worked every day. Yeah. Yeah, every day, and then and then came back to LA and finished it off. But it was like, you know, I don't know if anybody here has ever made a film, but what, when you're doing and you're shooting, you're just making bricks. You know, when you're actually filming the film, you just then you got at the end of the day, you got this pile of bricks, and now you got to make a house out of it. You know, and you take these scenes. Oh, that brick doesn't fit. <laughs> then when we shot five days, and only <laughs> goodbye. And so, it, you know, it was, it was that editing process, but I knew that there was a story there. There was a feeling that was, uh, unlike uh, many other films, that you just sense you were working on something, I, w I won't say like it's been, you know, the, the surprised everyone, but uh, it, it's just that I was, as I was watching the film, I, I think about Lupe Ontiveros and Stevie mm -hmm. Jordan and, and people like that that have passed on, you know. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it has become uh, a film where it's like the litmus test of being Chicano, you know? Yeah. Are you sure you're Chicano? Do you have a copy of Born in East L.A.? <laughs> 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 what, what, are your, uh, what are your memories for both of you of the, of the shoot? I remember um, going to dinner with Daniel Stern, and he, oh. was, he was very nervous about having dinner with me. Really? Yes. Really? I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> you were no. Tell more of the story here. No, he. <laughs> yeah. He, no um, wonder you stood me up now. He was really worried uh, that because he's married uh -huh. and he had and and uh, and and I honestly his my it was my first thing so I didn't even didn't even have that in my frame of reference. Uh -huh. So I was just utterly confused. So he was, uh, he was like a, a method actor. He was being yeah, yeah. seized already, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, but um, what I remember most about Cheech uh, when, he, when we were doing this film was that I came to it, obviously, as a huge fan. You know, like, the, you know, he was like, oh, my God, Cheech. Uh, I didn't tell you that because I didn't okay. want to get any weird ideas. I, I but sensed it. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I thought he was going to be like a real party guy. Like uh, I was he like, wasn't. dude, this is good. He's so you know? disappointing he when you get to know him. Not you know? at all. Like he was very serious. Um, he didn't was smoke pot all, twenty four hours a day at all. And. Um, also, as, as he mentioned, it's incredibly difficult to not only be directing, but starring. Uh -huh. And um, he was so good at it and seemed so relaxed. You had Peter McGregor Scott, yeah, who was a wonderful Peter, producer. He was a mate. Really yeah, had could, your back. He, um, yeah. And you also would watch the take, which I thought was really brave of you, because most um, actors, after they, they do the take, they won't do it. They won't go and look at it. But we had yeah. to, essentially. We were one of the first ones. Jerry Lewis actually was the first one that used videotape when he was shooting. And we picked that up right away because there was no, you know, we were comedians. You got to tell if, you got to sense if the scene's working. And so we started watching. Okay, well, that was, that was funny. But come in a little faster and maybe pan the camera over here when you're, uh, every take, you know. So and then you would call Luis Valdez for permission. Yeah. <laughs> is this good? You know, you know that is interesting. This was one of the first films that used yeah. video playback. Uh huh. We had to figure out a way to do it, you know, because we had a camera and nobody had ever done this before in at least a long time. And we, you know, where to put the video camera? Do you put it, you know, next to the other camera, and you, so you don't know where to look? You're looking at two cameras until finally, a couple films into it, they filmed. Uh, they figured out how to do a video tap, and then they could run it through the same lens. But before it was, it's two cameras, you know, look, and you go back and you. Let me just say, if anyone, if any of you ever get a chance to work with uh, Cheech, uh, he, is the, he is the <laughs> nicest. <laughs> <laughs> he is. This man, I'm not just saying, this man has been, he's, he's been the nicest, most generous, funny uh, uh, guy. And he, I mean, I mean, really, it was, uh, I mean, like she said, I mean, I, I, I was just, I looked at you like, I remember the first time I met you guys, 
uh, I just was talking to you, and Tommy was kind of like, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Chong. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, yeah, I know that, but, but you know, cheap. <laughs> And uh, he, he's just been the, uh, was, just the best friend over the years. It was a lot of fun, man. We had this a great is, this time. He's a terrific human being right here. Uh, I don't know anybody that doesn't like him. I mean, really, I don't. And if you're there, I'll kill you. You know, after the, the movie had this huge opening weekend, and after that, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, there were all these meetings. Like, well, how come? What happened? How? <laughs> why did this work so well? Because no one was expecting this. Uh, no one. And in fact, we we asked you to come on in and talk. Yeah. And it's because not only was the movie just nonstop hilarious, but it had heart, mm. and that's what people really connected with. Yeah. And they told their friends, this was before social media, this was when word of mouth meant word of mouth. Yeah. Telephones and talking. And from Friday to Saturday to Sunday, the gross went up. Uh. And it was because the movie touched people, not just made them laugh, yeah. but it really, really affected it people. A, it, 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 I mean, unbeknownst to anybody, I mean, it was, it was the top grossing movie for the next four weeks in the Western United States and did very well. So how come Hollywood hasn't learned that lesson? I don't know. And how come they're not doing the sequel and we're here 30 years 30 later years and they ahead. still haven't done yeah. the it's sequel? It's time. Let's storm oh, the you, gates. What? I thought back then that Mexican Americans or Latinos period would be a, as common on television and on movies as uh, at least as African Americans are, you know, but uh, uh, quite the... Yeah. They deliver Opposite the TVs happening. to your house, <laughs> like right now. <laughs> did you? Uh, you haven't. You didn't direct another film after that. No. Did you want to? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I really wanted to, but getting the movie off is like the hardest thing in the world. It's, it's harder now than it was then, and it's it's just difficult, and and you get wore down. You get worn down that I just like, you know, you get on a project and you develop it and, blah, blah, and you're down, you're two, three years down the road and you're, you run into a blind alley, a dead end. And I got to walk all the way back out there and do that. Oh, I, I just, yeah. it just wore me out. So I could make more money acting. So I started doing that, but I really wanted to direct. And then after a while, I just didn't want to direct anymore because I remember, oh man, all those early morning days <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And you got to, and you, the thing about making a movie is you start over so many times. You write it, that's the first pass. Then you rewrite it, that's another pass. Then you re-rewrite -re it. And then you finally get to the thing where you, where you uh, film it. And, and then, then you take that and you start over. You edit it, then you score it. And like at the end of the movie, I don't give a shit what the strings <laughs> sound like, man. <laughs> Just get this thing out in front of me. You do it. Whatever you think is fine, that's fine. <laughs> you know? Who is, uh, who is your director of photography? Uh, Alex Phillips. Uh, Alex Phillips, Mexican, uh, very iconic. Uh, 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 worked with Buñuel and, and all those guys. And, and he was Alex Phillips Jr. And he was, he was, it was a world-class cinematographer. I was very lucky to have him, too. And he, was, he really took care of me. And your editor was? Uh, uh, Scott Conrad, oh. who had, had uh, no, what am I talking about? He's going to kill me. Uh, Don Brochu, who was my brother-in-law. <laughs> Whoops! He was, he was a real editor. I mean, he had an Academy <laughs> Award nomination for The Fugitive, and, uh, but, but he was my brother-in-law. You know? But he, he did a... Not anymore. Not right. anymore. <laughs> Not any he did really good. But we, we had a life after this thing, you know, after the, after the movie had been out, like, I don't know, five months, something like that. I get a call out of the blue, and it's this woman named Sonia Levine. And she, she had this Friends of Cuba kind of club that she ran out of New York. And she says, listen, uh, I've gotten an invitation for you to bring the film to the Havana Film Festival. Would you like to go? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see Cuba. And, there were, you know, I don't and so we took it over there. And it was a big deal because we were taking an American film in a can under our arms, and, 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 and the, the studio was very nervous. You know, they didn't. How long were you in Miami? Uh, I wasn't in Miami for <laughs> at all. <laughs> you could Some of you will get these jokes on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we went to the, the Havana Film Festival, and we were just, you know, 
we were, they didn't know Cheech and Chong in, in, <laughs> because in, in those countries. It's the biggest Latino film festival in the world, the Havana Film Festival, and, and the most sophisticated. And uh, the, a lot of the countries didn't know Cheech and Chong. It was all the drug exporting countries <laughs> <laughs> that our films were banned in. You know, like, so they did know. So I was just a guy with a film, you know. And so we, we started, they started showing. It. I just wanted to see Cuba, you know. And it was like, and it was a get, we rented a car and took off, man. It was uh, totally different than what I expected, you know. I expected it to be a uh, heavy military presence. It was and beautiful. It was nothing. There was, I never saw a machine gun or a homeless person or, a, you know, and did it you, was. Did you guys go with the film? To the no, I went on my own. I swam there. And uh, <laughs> I, uh. Uh, you know, there, no, actually, actually, I was very fortunate. My, my cousin, my first cousin, was ambassador to Cuba from Mexico. So I actually went with a diplomatic uh, thing. Oh, really? It was great for marijuana. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> no, uh, Cuba, let me just say that, uh, you know, I hope it, it well, I, hope, I hope that the best, but I know it sounds weird to say, but it, I don't know how you found it, but it's, um, uh, the isolation of it has made it, uh, the ingenuity of the Cuban people and, and the beauty. I mean, mm -hmm. it is just uh, stunning. Yeah. And I went to Cienfuegos. I went all over. It's a, it was, I had a ball there, man. Very educated. Friendly, too. You would think that they were. Uh, yeah, no, not at all. Because, you know, over here we hear about communists, how they hate you and all that. And it, oh, Not that I want communism. Uh, how did the, I'm a capitalist. How did, how did the film go over there? The, the film, we were, it, it, it started showing, you know, like midway during the week. And I was, I didn't know it was, uh, they were showing it in competition. And, and I was sitting there in the bar with, with my guide, and, and, and the people would come back, hey, we love your film. And I said, oh, hey, come on, or I'll buy you a beer. He says, no, 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 you can't. Those are the judges. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I said, well, how many beers do you think it would take, man? For, you know, and, and so we look, and then we left. You know, go, trame unos jeans, y yo te voy a <laughs> And, and we took off for, uh, and, 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 and next, the next week, uh, I get this phone call, like, Two in the morning, blah, 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 blah. This is Sonia Levine. says, you won everything. What? No, you won. We won, we won best picture. Uh, uh, actually, we came in third in the official competition. Third play, uh, we won best screenplay, best uh, uh, art production, best uh, something, best script. That's best. That's best. best. And, and, which I wrote. Thank you very much. <laughs> and... And, and uh, we got this other award, the Glauber Rocha Award, was named after their most famous, uh, South America's most famous. Did you meet Fidel? I didn't, because I took off. But, you know, Neither did I. Yeah, well, you know, we're safe I, then. Some other viejo with a beard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Fidel Light. You know. so they gave us this the Glauber Rocha, which, which is the Fil uh, International Film Critics Award for Best Picture. So we, and we were the most you know, awarded film of the thing. And I was like, wow, our, our little born in East LA film, but it, it really touched people. And that was, you know, that's the most sophisticated audience you're ever gonna play a film in, especially in the Spanish speaking world. So it was, you know, it was a real thrill. Unless, uh, <laughs> unless I missed it in the credits, I don't remember seeing a made with the cooperation of the US Border Patrol. <laughs> Well, they don't like to talk about it, but you know, <laughs> they're, 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 they were cool. This well, movie is not going to be getting a White House screening. Yeah. Not, <laughs> is not John Michael still soon. alive? Uh, sort of. John, John Michael? Yeah, yeah. All I remember, I, I remember he was, uh, you know, he was a big star at the time. Oh. And I remember him uh, was just had a little bit of a drinking problem. Yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. I tried to separate you guys as much as I could. Because yeah, <laughs> I had one, and uh, <laughs> don't both put, of us together. Don't put those guys together. <laughs> but that, that was, uh, Jan was a really good friend he's of mine. He's a great guy, really still, I've seen him. Yeah, you know. he's, he's, but I don't remember he, uh, working with him. Is he okay? I, he's alive, I think. Yeah, I saw a picture of him. <laughs> no, really, I don't know where he is. I never saw someone put away a, a, a bottle of vodka. He's not like that kidding. Till I did it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> He was, uh, but he's a really fun guy. Everybody was great in this movie, all the cast. There movie. were a couple of interesting music cameos that I want to talk about. Yeah. Paul mentioned Steve Jordan. Steve yeah. Jordan, you don't perhaps the, one of the greatest, if not the, in my opinion, the next yeah. to Flacco, him and Flacco, right? Yeah. He's probably the greatest uh, uh, accordionist yeah. on the planet. The man can just imagine. The guy with the patch. The guy with the patch. Yeah. Yeah. Was in the he bands. was so quiet there, you know? Yeah. And I, after said he was loco, man. Oh, yeah, that's a chupo. 
<laughs> great, great Tejano accordionist who yeah, died a few years ago. Yeah, he, but, he, uh, he's uh, Steve Jordan. Uh, look him up. Yeah, he's, he's great. A AKA Esteban Jordan. Esteban Jordan. The other one, and because I'd seen his name in, when I was looking up the film in IMDb, and I see this guy, Larry Blackman, and I think it's like, that can't be Larry Blackman from Cameo. Yeah. Hey, how, did you guys catch the guy who played the Bruce Lee? Uh, he, he played the, the was it? Jason Scott Lee. Jason Scott Lee became a, a play Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, you know? Uh, oh, Jason Scott Lee? Yeah. yeah, he was Bruce Lee in the, in the biography, in the movie biography. But Larry Blackman is the African-American guy yeah. early in the film. Yeah. Uh, the coin? Yeah. That's in the girl? That's... What happened to that girl? For right 80s, 80s yeah. R&B fans, that's the guy <laughs> from Cameo. I have more people ask me about that girl. Oh, neat, neat. And that, oh. that, that's the funniest joke where he goes, uh, I have a black Peugeot. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Neith Hunter was just, he was just spectacular. Man. And, was like, and that was a fun auditioning process, you know, because there was, there was a, a lot of girls. That, you know, it always ended up be between her and, and Engelbert Humperdinck's daughter. Louise. Oh, yeah, yeah. She Ooh. put the hump in Humperdinck. Oh, baby. <laughs> They were, but, but beneath had that, that kind of feline sexiness, you know. So it's, Stop talking like that. Hey, baby. <laughs> but it was, uh, we, you know, that, that whole opening sequence with the girl walking around town and everybody, I mean, I stole that directly from A Girl Can't Help It. I don't know if everybody's ever seen that picture. Uh, and little Richard is saying, girl can't help it, no girl can't. And I was, they had all these gags, and I said, well, I want to do a thing like that with have all that kind of gags, and that worked out really well, you know. <laughs> It's, it's been influenced. Yeah. I yeah. think that's what it's called. It's I've had influences. Yeah. <laughs> um, you produced Do the Right Thing? I, you were involved? I, just like Born in East LA, I yeah. brought Do the brought Right Thing in and got it financed, yes. And Born on the Fourth of July? Born on the Fourth of July was another one. Um, after this film got made and it was a hit, was the studio interested in doing more Latino films? <laughs> Have a look. I, no, no. Yeah. It is, frankly, and I think everybody here would agree, it is always a struggle. I'm not going to bullshit you. It just is. But money, t but money talks. That's right. That's the currency. Right. And, right. There, and so yeah. there have been movies over the years. Uh, and it is, I think, as Cheech was saying, harder than ever. Yeah. It's, not gonna, it's never going to get easier. Yes, it will. Well, I want Paul to be right. We're going to quote you on our, that. Our numbers are just too yeah. many. You, you, they, they will hop on the train. Like, it's a business, right? As yeah. soon as they see. This is what baffled me about this movie. It, uh, it made money. Yeah. So you would think there would have been a, a born again in East LA, a reborn. Yeah. I mean, people. Born again. There is a Sharknado 5. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> but, Paul, you know, it's interesting. You're right. But this... And if this was today, we would immediately be yeah. doing the second one. It, it was it, before those the, sequels. The sequels. Yeah, it the, was just. I wrote a script after this, and, yeah. and, and 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 it was called "Born Again in East LA," and I, it was this, it was a story, and I wrote it down. Well, and what's the, what happens? Can you tell us? Well, it, are you still I, are you sitting on that script? I go to school and I learn English. Do I, th my <laughs> <laughs> I think I, think I still that. have it. Uh, but it was what it was. This is is, and I sent it to the studio, and and, and it was the same time that the last imitation of Christ, the last temptation of Tem not imitation, imitation. <laughs> yeah. the last temptation of Christ came out of Marty Scorsese. You know, don't and tell me the ending, please. And, and it was, and it was like. Uh, they, anything, and it was, a, it was a lot of controversy and a big flop, and so anything with any kind of religious, it came back like a boomerang, man, you know. No, no, we're not doing any of those. Okay, then it's got to start all over, and I had a couple of years invested in this already again. And so at that point, uh, <laughs> the studio, not that Sean was involved, but they said, Barney still was a big hit. So, oh, we really get what you're what you're doing, and we like your storytelling, and we like what you're doing, and blah, blah, blah. We have this script, and it's you and a dog, and you're a policeman, and this is a dog. You don't get what I'm doing! <laughs> you know, so I, I went, uh, I'll just uh, do something else, and then I did something else. You oh. know, Cheech is being, he's being modest about something. Yes, he is. Uh, there's an enormous amount of creativity in this man, and what he's gone on to do 
in the world of Chicano art. Oh, yes. That he... It, re, it, it, it just really deserves a mention and a hurrah. Thank you very and much. it's where you've taken so much of your vision in your helping other people and bringing artists in front of the world. And well, there's no scandal about him either. I was, I would have thought, you know, there would have been something about him. He's that, clean. Those payoffs, you know, come yeah. <laughs> No, it's like I'm a Chicano. I have to have three jobs at all times, you know, so <laughs> it's easy to do that, right? Huh? So I wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, currently at LACMA, there's an exhibition of uh, part of Pacific Standard Time, a retrospective of the work of Carlos Almaraz. And yeah. many of the paintings in that show come from a collection of yeah. Cheech Marin. So, if you haven't seen that show, please Everybody check it out. go to LACMA and see the Carlos Almaraz show. It's the best painting show you'll ever see in your life. On November 6th, uh, Cheech is going to be doing a sit down interview with Michael Govan, the head of LACMA. It's going to be at LACMA. Uh, so please check that out as well. And if you haven't heard, it's in the program, but if you haven't heard, and I can't overestimate the signific significance of this enough. In 2020, in Riverside, they're going to be opening the Cheech Marin Center for Chicano Art, Culture, and Industry. Industry, yeah. <laughs> A I can't. phenomenal accomplishment. I, it's, you know, it dropped out of the heavens, you know, and I finally came to the conclusion that if your motives are pure, uh, good things will happen. I mean, I've always kind of uh, uh, gone, gone along that line. That's been my philosophy. You, your intentions are pure, that, that stuff will happen, and, yeah. and, it, and it does. It really does. Before Who do you want them to play you in the movie of your life? <laughs> And Michael Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Before we wrap this up, I just want to switch gears for just a second because a few months ago, I had the opportunity to interview Kamala and Patricia Arquette about a, a documentary that they worked on called Equal Means Equal. And it's uh, a really important film, and I want you to just say a few words about that, if you Please. would. Thank you so much. Well, I found out about 10 years ago that women didn't have equal rights in the United States, and 96% um, of us think we do. So I spent the past decade looking at the laws and how they work or don't work, and they don't. Um, and I started a new initiative this year to get the last two states we need ratified before the end of this legislative year. So come elections in 2018, we'll know which state legislators actually support women and which say they do, but really don't. So please join me at equalmeansequal.org. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's my girl there. I've so, uh, I've always supported women. I got two of them right now who took a house <laughs> each. <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong. If you don't, uh, if you don't have this for your archives, yeah. Uh, if you don't have it, you can keep it. If you have it, uh, you f figure out who to give it to here tonight. Oh, really? It's uh, the 45, single, right? the single of Born in East L.A. Oh, wow. Accepting for Mr. Marin, <laughs> Tommy Chong. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. So thank you very much. Thank you. Kamala Lopez, Paul Rodriguez. Thank you. Don awesome. Daniel. Cheech Marin. Thank you very much for everybody for coming tonight. It was nice to see this picture with you. Thank you. El jefe. And the legacies. I'm going to put it back in.